I'd like to talk to you today about the idiot false god of modern church people. Um, I'm actually going to be honest about what they believe, truly believe. Um, if there was truth serum that could be put into these modern church people and they would actually have to tell you the truth of what they really honestly believe in, um, it would come out something like this. One day, or well, not really a day, but at uh, some point in time in the past, in eternity past, um, there was a god named the Father. And there was another god named the Son. And they looked at each other and they fell in love. And they were coming towards each other to show each other love. And just before they could kiss, God the Holy Spirit shows up between them as a bird. And um, God the Son says, oh, there's that pesky bird getting in our way again and of our love and everything. And, and the Father, God the Father says, no, that's actually the symbol of our love. And God the Son says, what should we call ourselves? Um, hmm, why don't we call ourselves Trinity? Yeah, well, Daddy, isn't that a girl's name? Well, yes, son, it is. But I, I think it really, you know, kind of the triunity of us and everything as three separate persons. And God the Son looks and he says, well, but Daddy, doesn't that make us three different gods? God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit? Isn't that three? And God the Father says, <laughs> no, no, my boy. Um, it's only one God. And God the Son's still going, but there's three different titles. Well, then we're all the same. And God the Father laughs again. And he says, oh, you have so much to learn, son. Uh, no, actually, we're three different titles, but we're and three different persons, but we're just only one God. You have to learn, pay more attention in your homeschooling here um, as we teach you this math and everything. And, and God the Son says, okay, Daddy, I'm sorry. I'm still learning. Um, are we going to put our name Trinity in our Bible? When we write the Word of God? No, no, no. It's just going to kind of come in tradition afterwards to kind of clarify what I didn't put in the Bible. And uh, God the Son says, Okay, all right. Um, so what's the plan, Daddy? And God the Father says, uh, Well, you see, I'm going to create man. And man's going to sin, as we know, as we've talked about. And, and uh, he's going to try to do a bunch of things to earn his salvation. And it's not going to work out so good. So eventually, son, I'm going to send you, and you're going to have to die on the cross. And, uh, and God the Son says, Well, that sounds bad. That sounds like it's going to be painful. God the Father says, yes, it is. And the Holy Spirit, you know, he's chirping or something. So they give him a cracker and, and he goes back to being quiet. And um, God the Spirit, the, the bird, the dove, you know, there. Um, and so everything's calm again. And, and God the Son says, well, Daddy, if I'm going to have to suffer, what's that going to mean? And God the Father says, well, son, that's the exciting part. You see, we're going to, when you die on the cross, you're going to start a new religion. And that new religion is going to go into the multi-billions of dollars in real estate. And God the Son says, really? Well, we're kind of up here with all the gold and everything else. And, and God the Father says, yeah, I, I know, I know. But down on the earth, it's going to be worth a lot of money. Let me tell you, God the Son, um, it's, I mean, we're going to have seminaries. We're going to have universities. We're going to have colleges. We're going to have museums. We're going to have... Uh, cruises, Christian cruises, uh, uh, all kinds of, you know, tours of the Holy Land. I mean, there's, you know, uh, some really big stuff is coming all because of you. Okay. There's going to be a lot of people. They're all pretty much going to hate each other and, you know, say that all the different churches are, you know, better than the other one and everything else. But, um, and the best part is, uh, you know, they're going to be tax exempt. And God, the son says, but, but dad, wouldn't they have to pay tax somehow? How would they get away with that with the government? And God the Father says, well, that's the best part, son. You see, they're going to work in tandem with the government. There's going to be 501c3 and, and other countries, other types of tax exemption, so that the government and the church work hand in hand. Makes perfect sense. That way it attracts more people because they can come and give money to our corporation, the church, and they can write it off on their taxes. Isn't that brilliant? And God the Son says, yeah, okay, I'm, I'm starting to understand, Daddy. Uh, but how are we going to communicate with them? How are we going to tell them? And God the Father says, well, again, I have a really good plan there. Uh, you see, our bird here, he's going to go and he's going to fly down and he's going to inspire uh, Bible versions. 
And God the Son says, oh, oh, virgins? You mean more than one? And God the God their Father says, well, sure, absolutely. We're going to come out because there's even more money in that. So, you know, we have multi-billions of dollars worth of churches, so we're going to have multi-billions of dollars worth of Bible versions. Doesn't that make sense? And God the Son says, I think so, it's starting to. And he says, yeah, sure. He said, we'll have the, the New King James Version. And God the Son says, well, isn't that an occult symbol in there? Oh, yeah, but, you know, let's not worry about that. Remember, the, the Trinity, see, see, three points, three points, but it's one symbol. Oh, oh, you see? And God the Son says, I, I, I think so. And then the, God the Father says, but that one's kind of, you know, conservative looking. So then we'll come out with the NIRV and we'll come out with the, the message. Ooh, that's a good one. And then we'll come out and we'll have the kind of bridge the gap between the Protestants and the Catholics. We'll have the Catholic Youth Bible, another very important one. And see, isn't that wonderful? And God the Son says, boy, this is a big plan, Daddy. I think this is really good. Yeah. Okay. I have to stop now. I think my brain's starting to hurt a little bit here. Um, Deuteronomy chapter 32. In the King James Bible, uh, going to be doing a little study here, not in a church building, um, and I'm not going to be pleasing the Trinity because the Trinity doesn't exist. Okay, it will in the future though. Keep hope. All you Trinitarians out there, the Trinity is coming in the future. Antichrist, false prophet, and Satan, the dragon, you know, okay? So you will have a Trinity, three different persons, all claiming to be God. You will have it. Just be patient for your Trinity. He'll show up eventually. Uh, or they, excuse me, they, they will show up. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 26 through verse 33. I said I would scatter them into corners. I would make the remembrance of them to cease from among men. Were it not that I feared the wrath of the enemy, lest their adversaries should behave themselves strangely, and lest they should say, Our hand is high, and the Lord hath not done all this? For they are a nation void of counsel, neither is there any understanding in them. Modern church people, they are void of counsel, there's no understanding in them. They're wicked. Oh, that they were wise, that they understood this, that they would consider their latter end. How should one chase a thousand, and two, th two put ten thousand to flight, except their rock had sold them, and the Lord had shut them up? Um, a lot of these church building people, the modern ones, they're going to be destroyed. Plain and simple. But look at verse 31. For their rock is not as our rock, even our enemies themselves being judges. Oh boy, get a hold of that one. Their rock. What are these modern church buildings all about? Little rock and roll there? Mm -hmm. All bringing rock music in to evangelize the youth. Okay, the youth aren't there. You're not having an evangelistic meeting for the youth. Get the rock out. Bring in the old hymns. Oh, no. We prefer the rock. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, would you get right down to it? The rock there being a title for Jesus Christ. Sorry to the Catholics there. The rock that Jesus built the church upon is himself, not Peter, You know whom he later called Satan in the same passage, which the Catholics always ignore that. You won't get into that. It's a title for Jesus Christ. And the Jesus of the modern church people is a false Christ. He is the Antichrist. You have to understand that. The little thing I did there at the beginning is exactly what these people believe if they were honest. But they always try to go back, well, no, the, the Bible, too. they don't even believe in the Bible. But their rock is not as our rock. My God, my Savior, Jesus Christ, He is God, manifest in the flesh. In Him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. There's a body, a soul, and a spirit. Man is made after the similitude of God. Man has body, soul, spirit. Body is Jesus Christ. Soul is God the Father. The Spirit is the Holy Spirit. It's so easy. It's not difficult. But these satanic Trinitarians come along and they mess that whole thing up. That rock that you believe in, your lowercase rock, your little Trinity rock, is not as my rock, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Godhead. <clears throat> but look at this. Even our enemies themselves being judges. If you're a lost atheist out there, I congratulate you. Give you a little round of applause there. I congratulate you for not wanting to join modern Christianity. 
It's a circus without a tent. It's a nut house. Okay? It's a bunch of crazy, stupid, weird little people going around with a little social club and everything else. I thank the Lord that the atheists stay away from the church buildings. You are my enemy, spiritually speaking, but you have enough brains that you can judge that mess out there called Christianity and look and say, what a bunch of nonsense. Look at a bunch of hypocrites in there and everything else. You know, <clears throat> here's Pastor So-and-so, founder of Hillsong Church. Um, stepping down, I had some, you know, zipper trouble down there on the jeans, the zipper trouble there, you know. Perversion. Yeah. Um, here's Jack Hiles, the uh, you know, biggest Baptist pastor in, his, in America at the time and everything else, uh, committing adultery with his secretary. Um, uh, here's his son David, and he has adulterous relationships with multiple women, gets married again, kills one of his own children in cold blood, gets it covered up, goes to another Baptist church, and there he's fornicating with multiple married women, and, and he gets kicked out. And, 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 and if you're an atheist, you look at that and you go, what's this? Hey, um, there's a, you know, pandemic going on. Um, shut your churches down. Yes, sir. I thought you said you people could cure things. And you're shutting down. The gates of hell shall not prevail against Christ's church. Oh, there's a pandemic. Shut the church. Close the church. My worst enemies as atheists or heathen or whatever else you are out there, you say, I don't want anything to do with Jesus Christ. You can look and be a judge. God can use you with the brains that you have, the common sense that you have to judge the Christian churches out there and say, they're fake. Bunch of nonsense. I agree. For their vine, the false modern church people, is of the vine of Sodom. Huh. And of the fields of Gomorrah, their grapes are grapes of gall, their clusters are bitter. Hmm, isn't it funny that the uh, modern church men are effeminate, like Sodomites, Sodom and Gomorrah? Isn't that interesting? Uh, well, I'm a preacher. I, I'm the preacher up here, and I wear skinny jeans. I'll, I'll dress effeminate, look effeminate, and I'll say, God has a plan for you. I won't yell and, and holler and spit and, and, you know, pound the pulpit. And whatever. Well, you don't have to pound the pulpit. There are no pulpits in the New Testament. But um, I don't be rude in my speech and crude in my behavior and whatever else. I, I'm polished. I went through, you know, homiletics in college, Bible college. So I came out knowing how to deliver the word in a way that's very moving yeah, when I watch modern churches, it, it, it does make me want to move to the bathroom quickly so I can vomit. <laughs> Verse 33, their, their wine is the poison of dragons and the cruel venom of asps. <clears throat> um, yeah, we'll stop there. I'm trying to look at my notes here. Verse 33. Now I'll go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. But it says there, their wine is the poison of dragons and the cruel venom of asps. Oh, we're going to, you know, give you some real sweet things here and, and whatever. That's just a bunch of stuff from dragons. And an asp is a poisonous snake, if I remember correctly. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1 through 5. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant, how that all our fathers were under the cloud, and all passed through the sea, and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and did eat did all, did all eat the same spiritual meat. Look at verse 4. And did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was the Apostle Peter, the first pope. No, that rock was Christ. But with many of them, God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Just like what's going to be happening here in the future. When God judges a nation, he starts at people that call themselves Christians. And uh, the judgment of God already came. Their uh, chance to prove themselves. Separation of church and state. No one silences this pulpit. If the truth cannot be boldly proclaimed from the pulpits of the land, then what place is there for the truth? 
Oh, shut down. Oh, yes, sir. Yep. You realize how big of a statement it would have made if all the church buildings in America and the UK and Canada and Australia and go down through all the different countries. If they had all, all said, uh, no, we're not closing. No, we're not going to do it. We're going to stay open. But they didn't do that. Thereby proving that they're not of God. Plain and simple. <laughs> I'm not worried about any contradiction on that point. And I get these, you know, people, our church never shut down. We never shut down. Proof. They never give proof. Not one bit of proof. Well, brother, I can't post the proof online because we could get in trouble with the government. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> right. Jump down to verse 18 of the same chapter there. Behold, Israel, after the flesh, are not they which eat of the sacrifices partakers of the altar? What say I then, that the idol is anything, or that which is offered in sacrifice to idols is anything? But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils, and not to God. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. Do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? Hmm. Interesting. You know, when you start to come up with all these false things and the new versions and the 501c3 church buildings and the Trinity nonsense and all the other things that the modern church people stand for. Oh, we have to be like the world to win the world. When in Rome, do as the Romans do and all their other satanic philosophies. When you get into that stuff, you're provoking the Lord to jealousy. Like the Bible says, you're stronger than he is. I mean, look at that. Look at verse 22. Do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? I am God. Beside me there is none else. There is none other name given among men, or under heaven, given among men, whereby we must be saved. Jesus saith unto them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Well, yes, but um, there are some other things that I'd like to interject here. Your Bible needs to be clarified. We need to, we need to prove this, and we need to prove that. Hey, uh, you know, I know that the, I know the Bible says that the friend of the world is the enemy of God. I know that. And, and whatever is highly esteemed among, among men is abomination in the sight of God. I understand God, but we have this new thing now. We're a CCM band and we do crossover albums because that gets us more fans and we can witness the better to people and everything else. I want to get Christian tattoos to witness. Okay. Um, even if it was spiritually okay to get tattoos, which it's not, but even if it was, what kind of poison is in that ink that it stays on your body permanently and never washes off? Well, oh God's for it. Chapter and verse? Chapter and verse. Well, you know, the Old Testament thing in Leviticus, you know, where they, they had the tattoos and whatever else, you know, that's... That's, uh, um, you know, back in the Old Testament. We don't have to follow that anymore. Okay, where does it say it in the New Testament that you can get tattoos? Print marks upon you. Um, I know there's a mark of the beast that's put upon the forehead in the book of Revelation. Um, and it's not a good thing. <laughs> Show me some other place. And, it, you know, if you're dumb enough to say, well, where Jesus has his thigh, you know, his name written on his thigh. It's talking about his vesture. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Duh. You know. Yeah. Uh, modern church people. But um, are we stronger than he? Verse 22. You provoke the Lord to jealousy when you lie about him. And you also think that you're stronger than him. Uh, this King James Bible is no good anymore. We need to rewrite it because we're smarter than God. Um, we need to uh, have church buildings and uh, we can't have Jesus over them. You know, I mean, that's wrong. We'd have to have elected officials. And, you know, if there's a bad guy coming up to be elected, you know, whatever, running for president or whatever the political position is, prime minister, whatever. Um, I can't tell you who to vote for because then I would lose my tax exempt status and that would be a bad thing because I can't trust God completely. That I shouldn't tell all truth. There's just some things I shouldn't say from the pulp. We're stronger than God, you see. Yeah. And in reality, what are they really worshiping? They're worshiping devils. According to the scriptures, their rock is not as our rock. 
who they worship, their Jesus that they worship, he's a false Christ. And if you get right down to it, he's the Antichrist. I mean, you compare what they believe and everything else, he comes, he's bringing peace. By peace he shall destroy many, the Bible says, the Antichrist. Um, he comes and, and he doesn't judge people. He, he joins all people together. Antichrist. He's okay with all types of music. He's okay with this. He's okay with it. Antichrist. That's who they really worship, the modern church people. So, <clears throat> you have an opportunity to repent and get right with the Lord. Um, it isn't about becoming a member of this website or this subscribe to this channel and then you'll be going to heaven or something. You know, give me a break. <laughs> um, I probably should unsubscribe to the channel, you know. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm not monetized, so it doesn't matter what you do with your subscription, you know, uh, whatever. Um, I like when people, you know, share the videos and whatever else because then YouTube just doesn't bury everything. Um, great, praise the Lord. But the fact of the matter is your authority is the King James Bible. And you don't define Jesus according to your beliefs and your feelings and whatever else. You define it according to the book. Somebody comes along and they say, um, you know, there's a lot of good versions uh, that are more accurate translations of the Textus Receptus. You say, okay, so then my King James Bible's no good anymore? Well, let's sit down and let's go over some of these verses. That's not a better translation. It's not a that causes errors and, you know, okay, let me show you some of the things that the, I know about some of the typical verses where the new versions attack the truth of God's word. Let's go there. Oh, New King James failed that one. New King James failed that one. Okay, you know what? Dump it. Throw it out. Um, hey, um, we come along and we, we, you know, you really need to go to church. Okay, you're not just supposed to forsake the assembling of yourselves together. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25 says that. Okay, who's it written to? Is it written to a Christian? Well, no. Um, if you understand dispensationalism, it, it's not written to a Christian. And um, <clears throat> let's just say for a minute, though, it is. Hebrews 10, 25. Not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together, but exhorting one another in your 501c3 church as long as the government allows it, and you have the military ensign flag up on the front to show who the real commander-in-chief is. And by the power invested in you, by the state of wherever you are, you can serve the Lord as long as you don't talk about elections or any other political process. Really? Okay. Um, what did John do on the island of Patmos? Was John out of fellowship with the Lord on the island of Patmos? No. You know, they just they sent a, the Romans sent a boat out every you know, Sunday morning so he could be in regular fellowship at First Baptist Church back on the, you know, the mainland there, you know, in Corinth or something like that where the First Baptist Church was built. What about Christians today that are in persecuted countries where there's no possible way that they can have a church building? What about them? What about the fact that you go to all these church buildings out there and there's sexual sins that are being covered up and there's pride issues and there's people just standing around after the service talking about worldly things and just a social club. What about that? Let's not talk about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Trinity thing. I wrote a book, The Godhead Doctrine. I've preached on it. Most of the stuff I preached on over the years available for free on my channel and I have it condensed into a book form. Get the book or don't get the book. Doesn't matter. The truth is there, written in the pages of the King James Bible. But if you're one of these modern church people, you would reject that. <laughs> so, um, I don't want to be yoked up with these modern church people. If you're an atheist out there, like I said earlier, um, please do continue staying away from Christianity and organized religion. But let me just give you a little prophecy, right? And it will be a sure word of prophecy. If you are an atheist, please listen to me. Somebody wants to cut this part of my video out and put it out for the atheists, go ahead. Here's a sure word of prophecy. Organized religion is going to take over. Right now, what is being done? Thesis, anti antithesis, antithesis, if you want to say it that way, and then synthesis. All right, the Hegelian dialectic. It's been used by political movements for years. All right, you raise up opposition, you raise anger to the opposition, and then you come and you bring in the real system. All right? 
here's what's going to happen. Right now, liberalism and all this woke culture, uh, the LGBTQ, whatever other letters, um, all the just the, the wicked stuff out there that conservative people hate, that is being pushed into the forefront and is being, it's you know getting more and more ridiculous to where there's liberals that are coming out and saying, okay, this is really getting messed up. I don't even go along with this anymore. Why is it being pushed out there by the media to ignite the right, to get people angry, conservatives angry? And all of a sudden you're going to have a political leader like Adolf Hitler come out and he's going to be up there and he's going to say some righteous standards and the people are just going to, all the conservatives will flock to his side and he'll say, get in there and start killing these liberals. And if you're an atheist and you say, hey, I'm not on either side, that's not going to work. They will put you on one side or the other. You're either with us or you're with the terrorist. Remember that one? George W. Bush said that, the uh, professing Christian. Um, you can avoid, you know, you come to my place here, I see you out in public or whatever else, you're an atheist. I'm not going to come running over with a, grab a sword and convert or die. Uh, not happening. Not happening. I get to talking to you, you say I'm an atheist, I'll try to, well, okay, well, can, you know, can I talk to you about the Bible? No, no okay, all right, see you. That's the stand of a true Bible believer. You don't want to talk about it? I can't force it on you. If I force conversion on you, then it's a false conversion. You see? You have to get there by yourself, by an act of your own free will. But in the future, oh boy, there will be no atheists, at least, you know, openly professing. You'll be forced into alt-right Catholicism. You know, that's what's going to happen. Stay away from the modern church people because they are ultimately either going to go one of two ways. They'll either go with the liberal movement and get wiped out, or they'll go and they'll join and merge in with this alt-right, conservative, Catholic movement, pro-Catholic movement. Study history. Look what the Catholic Church has done. Look at the Dark Ages. Look at how they controlled kings down through the years, how they passed interdicts that shut churches down, shut businesses down, which we proved happened in 2020. Um, Catholicism believes in the, the spiritual and the, in the temporal swords. Please understand that. The Bible prophesied five kingdoms. We are in the fifth one right now. That's part weak, part strong. The ancient Rome, Roman Empire, merged and became the Roman Catholic Church. They went from this to this. If I can say it that way. So that is going to be it. I thank you very much for watching. Um, stay away from these modern church people. I can't say that enough. They're very wicked.